Hello everybody, it is the Mermaid Priestess. We are back here today for a brand new Timeless Pick a Card reading and Conchomancy reading. So, if you are new to the channel, hello and welcome. If you are already part of the family, hello and welcome back. I am so glad to be spending time with you today bringing forth some messages from your spirit guides, guarding the angels, higher self, universe, divine, for your highest good to know. Thank you so much to those of you who have been liking my videos, sharing my content, commenting on my videos, and leaving feedback. Thank you so much for your support. It really means so much to me. Thank you as well to those of you who have been booking private readings with me and also donating to my channel. I deeply appreciate each and every one of you. And your support really, truly means so much to me. It means the world to me. So today we're going to be diving in and asking spirits, what do people really think when they first meet you? So this is going to be about first impressions, but not just the basic first impressions. I want to know, I want to really dig into the surface. What are they not saying when they first meet you? What really goes through people's heads? So... That being said, if you would like to take a moment to pause the video, you can so that you can ground, center yourself, clear your mind, and take a few deep breaths. <sighs> Calling your spirit guides, guardian angels, higher self, universe, divine, and ask them to help direct you to a group or groups that contain the information for your highest good to know right now. When you are ready, we have four groups to choose from today. Over here, we have group number one, group number two, group number three, and group number four. When you are ready, timestamps will be listed in the video description down below, so you may skip ahead to the group or groups that you feel the most intuitively drawn to. Always remember that this is a general reading and you are the ruler of your own reality. Please only take what resonates with you. Leave the rest behind. I may get messages for different people, so just bear that in mind as you listen. If you hear something that just does not fit, don't take it with you. Don't try to make it fit. And with that being said, let's get right in. Hello, group number one. Sorry for shaking the camera on you. Let's get into some contramancy first. Let's draw some seashells out from the bag for you. And then we'll get into your cards and draw some cards for you on camera. So what do people really think when they first meet pile number one? So first shell here. Okay. This one's kind of tricky. I'm going to go with both of these. Okay. Alrighty, so tuning into the energy of these shells that I have drawn out. I think that based on the energy of those I am picking up on and their mindset, remember just because somebody thinks something about you doesn't make it true about you. It's just what people don't say when they first meet you, what they think about you, um, like a first impression. But I'm getting that for this energy collective, they see you as somebody that has their own life, their own things going on. Um, they may think that, say you have some coworkers or you work a certain job, um, they may meet you and they may think that your family life is above everything. Um, they may think that, you know, you have so much going on in your personal life, whether you do or not. This is just the impression that people aren't saying that they think about you. Um, they see you as somebody who is very family oriented, I'm feeling here. They see you as somebody who is very diehard and loyal to those that they care most about. So it could be your family, could be a partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whatever, um, family, children. Um, for some reason, I just got a message that somebody is getting married. So um, people pick up that you're very devoted to your partner, um, quite possibly. Or they may think that you are very, very overly focused on your partner. And again, 
this is just what pe some people think. It doesn't mean it's true. But they feel like you don't really have time for them. You don't really have to, as much time. Like, they feel like they're kind of in the background as opposed to what you have going on in your everyday life. Like, outside of work or outside of friends or whatever. And that is perfectly okay. Like, family comes first, you know? Um, but I'm getting this sense, like, I keep seeing, like, a birthday cake or a wedding cake or something along these lines in my mind's eye. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me but they may see you as somebody that is very well dressed very well put together um they may see you as a great host or hostess kind of energy like you're really good at organizing events like a larger than life kind of personality you're really good at coordinating things um some of you may be wedding planners that doesn't have to be a thing but maybe that's just a very specific thing for one or a couple of you but I'm seeing that people also view you as a diehard romantic, like you're a really good partner. You're very romantic. You're very sweet. You're very thoughtful, especially for the people that matter most. They may view you as somebody that puts their significant other or whoever you're dating on a pedestal. And it's kind of like once that person's on your mind, you don't really talk about very much anyone else or think about anyone else or there's no room for anybody else. Um, they see you as somebody that's very future oriented. They see you as somebody that has their priorities straight. They see you, like, even if you don't always feel very well put together, they feel like you're somebody that has their life in order, even though you don't necessarily always think that. Like, you feel misunderstood at times because of that. But people view you this, like, when they first meet you, they see you as somebody very fast-paced, they have a lot going on, that you're very busy, um, that you've got other things going on and you're too busy for them, like, because you have these other things going on or, like, you have your priorities, which is perfectly okay. Um, they see you as somebody very big picture oriented, um, very devoted to what matters the most. They may see you as very ambitious um, in a workplace. I feel like they see you as somebody that is cl climbing their way up to a management position or they feel like you would reach that potentially. They see you as very persistent, hardworking, devoted, and like you've got your priorities straight. Um, you know what matters to you and you don't really give a shit about anything else. Like, again, first impressions, but that's just what I'm getting here. Um, you kind of have this, re you, you have this generous heart. I'm seeing people think about you, um, that you have this generous heart and that you really go out of your way. Sorry, I have my, <laughs> my blanket in the background. It's like sticking up. So it almost looks like there's somebody underneath it. <laughs> And I'm just observing it. Anyway, um, but they see you as somebody who is larger than life. That You have these big picture plans. That you're a visionary. That um, you, they may think that you're wealthy or you have quite a bit of money upon first meeting you. Even if you don't feel like that at all. Even if you don't feel very well put together on the surface. They just assume that because it seems like you've got your own things going on. You're, you're very focused on the big picture about whatever it is coming up or what you talk about, like what you bring up. There's so much that you probably do not bring up that people only see the perfection to a degree. So that's what they assume like you're all about. Um, they don't necessarily see the struggles uh, upon first glance. They think that you hold it all together that you kind of hold down the fort in that way, that you've got the reins on life, um, and that you, they feel like you're in control of your finances. Um, very devoted, very loving towards and loyal towards those that matter the most to you. Very busy person. So let's see what your card is, and we'll draw some more. Scales. They make, I don't know why this is making me think of, like, marriage or, um... Somebody who, again, has their priorities straight. They don't have time for bullshit. They don't have time for really anything that doesn't make it on their list of priorities. And maybe you do feel like that. Like, you're just tired of games and drama. Um, okay. I see you as somebody, like, you have been through a lot. You've had to make some really tough decisions, I'm feeling. 
and it's like you're you're somebody that's really good at managing chaos that's making really that's good at making choices in the heat of the moment or like when there's chaos around you or it's really busy around you even though you may feel like a nervous wreck people think that you're cool and collected um they think that you're very hard working once again you're good at um say there's a messy situation like which is a workplace as just an example. Say there's a messy situation at work and people view you as the person that can kind of come in and save the day and make it look clean. Like you're good at cleaning things up. You're, you have kind of like this touch that turns everything to gold in a way. So people view you as somebody that is able to clean up these messes. Like you're good at organizing things. Um, they see you as somebody who is very contemplative. They may see you as somebody that does try to hold things together, like you're avoiding certain things, like you don't want to talk to other people about your problems. There's people that may want to reach out and ask you what's wrong. And I'm seeing, like, they feel like you're really busy, you're wrapped up in your own world, and there's some people that do want to help you out, but they see, like, you're, so, you're very self-sufficient, so they don't really want to bother you with it. Um, that's what I'm picking up. So let me move these around just a little bit. Okay. Sorry for that, guys. What do people like, for first impressions? So we have higher perspective in magical realms. So... They, yeah, they see you as somebody very smart and intelligent and wise that um, knows how to handle a difficult situation. That you, again, don't have time for deceit or bullshit. Like, you know what matters to you and you don't really want to accept anything else. Um, they see you as somebody who has been actually through a lot. And because you've been through a lot, they see you as somebody that's protecting their peace at all costs. And it's like you're very selective about who you let in your social circle. People may see you as a bit choosy in that kind of way, which you have every right to be. Um, there's people that want to get close to you but feel like they can't. They feel like you may be more distant. Like, say, okay, for example, this is, a, this is something that comes to mind. Say you're at work. They may view you as the person who doesn't like to make friendships at work. Like, you'd rather keep work at work um, to... Because you don't want the drama. You don't want drama from other people. Like, you want to compartmentalize. Like, work is here. Home is here. This is my priority. I'm not really here to talk to all of you. Like, sometimes people can get that impression from you um, that you're quick to leave. <laughs> like, you have other things to do. Um, but I'm getting, like, you're good at prioritizing. They're saying, like, you're very smart. You're very wise. You're very assertive. That's what people think of you when they meet you. Like, you got your eye on the prize. You know what you're going to do. It makes you a good leader as well. It makes you very self-sufficient. It makes you very organized. So, this is what I'm seeing for you, my lovely group number ones. I hope you enjoyed your reading. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Comment down below if it resonates. I really do value and appreciate reading your feedback. Um... And if you are new to the channel and you have not already hit the subscribe button, go ahead and join the family. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more content. I am very excited to bring these messages for free today and glad I have the opportunity to do so. And I hope to see you all in the next reading. See you later. Bye. Hello, my beautiful group number twos. For those of you who are drawn to this pile, hello and welcome to your reading. Let's find out what people really think about you when they first meet you. So we're going to start out with um, pulling out some seashells and reading some seashells for you, doing some contramancy, and then we will dive into the card that I had drawn for you and then draw some on camera. So... A lot of people are very attracted to you when they first meet you. Okay. Let's do one more spirit.
What do you think of this group when we first meet them? So guys, I'm trying to really tune in so I get the right crystal or crystal um detail for you. Okay. Perfect. So I feel like people are really drawn to you when they first meet you. They may think of you as somebody that's very attractive. Um, at first sight, like a lot of people are very drawn to you, not just for your looks, but also your presence and personality. I think you present yourself very good. Even when you're not talking, people are just very drawn to be looking at you. You may notice a lot of people staring at you when you first meet them or when you go into a new place. Um, you kind of have like this magnetism and a certain charisma about you. Like you don't even really have to put much effort in for people to notice you. Um, people are just very drawn to you. They're very attracted to you. They're very curious about you. Um, I think a lot of people are physically attracted to you. To be quite honest here, group number two, um, they see you as somebody that's very alluring. They see you as somebody who has a lot going for them. So not only are you good looking in people's eyes, but you have a really good personality. People want to find out more about you. They're really curious. I think they're really curious about what they see at first glance because they're attracted to you. And then they're like, wow, this person's really cool. Or um, they have a really good sense of humor or like they have an interesting life. Like there, there's something that's kind of like the carrot teasing the rabbit. Um, I'm kind of getting with this. So I'm feeling like people want to know more about you. They're, they feel like you may have an air of mystery. You got your own things going on and they want to be a path. They want to be a part of your path. They want to be your friend. I think you make people want to be your friend. They may cling to you. They may follow you around a little bit, or you may notice certain people being like this or being a little smug around you. It's probably because they're developing a little bit of a crush, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, and you're kind of like, what are you doing? Get out of here. <laughs> um, but you may get a lot of people asking for your number a lot. Um, but I feel like people... <laughs> People are very attracted to you. They also think that you have a very nice smile I'm getting here. Um, they they like your humor. They like to make you laugh. Like people just want to have that, get that reaction out of you. Um, you make people very curious. People are very curious when they first meet you. They may see you as somebody that's a little bit guarded at, fir at first glance. Not everybody here. Like there's certain parts of your life that you kind of keep off limits. Like you, people need to get to know you more. You don't just expose everything right on the spot. And it's like you have a certain magnetism about you that makes people want to get to know you. But it's like it's almost secretive too at the same time. So it's like this, this oyster that um, they want to open up. They want to know more about. And it's like you're not willing to just expose yourself to just anybody. Uh, you're very well put together. You may be very well dressed. Um, they may think that you have a good style, you take really good care of your hair, um, you smell good, like, people are very physically drawn to you, and they want to know, like, you have an energy that makes people curious, so, that's what I'm seeing with the seashells so far. There's a lot of people that want to date you <laughs> when they first meet you, um, crown yeah you have like this regality to you I, I hope that's actually how you say that word but people think that you're a really big deal like a once in a lifetime kind of sighting when they first meet you I'm making sure that I'm not shuffling these cards the wrong way because I really don't want to get awkward um so I feel a bottom card Okay, Eight of Pentacles. Yeah, you're kind of minding your business, doing your own thing. They may see you as somebody that is also very talented and hardworking and passionate and ambitious. They think you have a charm. Um, if you are self-employed, this is a good sign. They think that you're really good at what you do. You have a lot to offer. Um, there's a lot of gold that you carry, and so to speak. Um, you have so much to offer and like people just can't take their eyes off of you. You could sell them anything to be quite honest. It's just the impression I'm getting. A lot of people are attracted to you and they, they like what you do. They're allured to what you do. People want to know more about you. They think you're very talented. You think you're very interesting. Um, they see you as somebody who may be a more of an entrepreneur spirit as well. Like you're always off on some kind of adventure, not slowing down for anybody. And they're curious where your life will go next. Like they're like, see you as somebody that's there one moment, gone the next. And they're like, wait, slow down. I want to get to know you. Um, 
like a once in a lifetime kind of sighting. Uh, yeah, you may be a bit more guarded and choosy on your path. They may see you as a little bit quiet when they first meet you, for some of you, um, and guarded. Like you're just there to get what you need to get done. But I'm feeling like people really want to get to know you more on a personal level because there's that attraction there. Um, they want to know about your talent, the more you, you have to offer. They may spark up conversations about what you do just to have a conversation with you. Um, they see you as somebody who chooses their time wisely. Like you're not going to just stick around and wait for excuses. You're going to put solid boundaries down. You're going to move on when you need to. Um, they see you as somebody that manages their time very wisely. You wear the Bleh. You wear the crown on your head very well and deservingly. Like, you don't have time for ulterior motives, I'm hearing spirits say. Yeah, you're very interesting. You may be a really good storyteller. I'm um, noticing the Six of Pentacles here too. So this is making me think of somebody who may be a really good salesman, who may be really good at what they do, but you're able to keep a personality outside it is what you do for work or career or just in general, like what people view you as. Like you're good at putting on the crown, but having your own life and personality and everything outside of that, they see that you're able to separate this and that you're just really good at juggling multiple things at once even if you don't feel like you're good at multitasking or doing a lot at once they see you as somebody that is very self-sufficient in this way that you're kind of like a jack of all trades they see you as somebody again that manages their time very wisely and um yeah somebody with good boundaries is not gonna wait around and like people have to feel like they have to have a lot going on they may try to impress you a lot because they think that you're so high class um so they feel like they have to put on a show around you in order to get your attention so that you don't just move on to the next thing i think that you probably are just very focused like you just don't have time for anything extra like that's how they view you and i feel like people know that you're very cautious you're very um, you like to be sure of what's next, and so I feel like they feel they need to be real enough for you, but then they try to put on these big shows. You may notice that, like, people trying to impress you often or tell you these stories that don't seem realistic in order to get your attention. So, releasing, purification, spiritual cleansing, letting go. Um, they see you as somebody, maybe, who has been through a lot, that you're very independent. Some of you, a specific specific message they may see you as somebody who is freshly single um or they hope that you're single um i'm feeling like you're kind of like this rare attractive sighting to people and that's kind of the first impression they get and they're like wow how can i really get this a person's attention for real and then they go overboard with it and like damn i lost my chance um so i want one more card in spirit not two they see you as somebody who has a lot of emotional depth and intelligence and that you're not going to stick around for bullshit and let it, they need to really up their game in order to impress you. Okay, an awakening, preparing, relocation, um, ascension. They may... Huh, okay, let me tune in and properly feel they may see you as somebody that is very creative that is always that is moving from one area to the next they may see you as somebody that moves around a lot you may travel for work um or something along these lines uh you may be very fast moving in what you do but i'm seeing like you've got your mind on other things you've got your mind on big picture ideas kind of like a little bit like pile number one maybe you were also drawn to pile number one uh, that might be validation for you to go ahead and go check out both or hi if you are here from that pile. But they see you as somebody very creative. Um, they may see you as somebody very artistic. Uh, you're, you've got your mind on your own plans, on your own independence, and they want to keep up with you. So this is what I'm seeing for you, group number two. I hope that you enjoyed your reading. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Comment down below if, it really, if this reading resonates for you. I really do value and appreciate reading your feedback. If you are new to the channel and, not, and have not already joined the family, please consider subscribing so that you may see future content when it gets released. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in booking a private reading, I am currently offering services through my Etsy shop, which the links to my services are listed in the video description down below. I also have a link to donate to my channel if you are feeling generous and feel called to. Uh, I really deeply appreciate it. My PayPal link is in the video description for donations. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here and allowing me to read for your energy. It was quite the honor and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. Hello, my beautiful group number threes. Let's find out what people really think about you upon first meeting you. Remember, this is a general reading. Please only take what resonates with you. Leave the rest behind. We're going to get into your seashells first and then we are going to read the cards. So... Yeah, remember that this is based on what other people think and they may not say to you. Not necessarily the truth or the reality of how you are. This is just what people don't tell you. So, the first shell here. The second shell. All right, so right off the bat, the impression I'm getting is they may view you as somebody who may be more on the introverted side. Either that or you have a really close knit of friends. Um, they see you as the type of person that would take a secret to their grave for the people that you care about. Um, like if you have a really close friend and people confide in you, I'm picking up that people assume that you're the kind of person that will take that secret to the grave that you have a few close-knit um, individuals as your friends around you, like a friend group, and it's like you're really tight with them. You're really close-knit and, like, so close to be family. And there's a lot of people that want to be invited into your friend group, but they kind of feel like because you're so close-knit with these people or appear to be, like, they don't have room to join. Um, so they kind of stay away. They let you do your own thing. They feel like they're not invited into your friend group just because you have such a connection with these people. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the assumption that they make. Like, oh, they're already close with these groups of people. So I'm I'm not going to bother with that. They probably don't want me here. Uh, like they're already having a good time. They already are really well acquainted with each other. Um, I feel like you're somebody that does not break promises. They feel like you're not the kind of person to break promises. They view you as somebody very dependable, um, very person, is per is it personable? Um, someone very personal, somebody that is very, um, trustworthy. They see you as loyal to your friendships. They see you as somebody who is very smart and makes really wise decisions I'm getting here. Um, and I'm getting that... They see you as somebody that has a little bit of a smugness to them, um, even if you don't. Like, they feel like you're somebody that sees through their intentions really fast. Like, like they can't get away with anything with you um, because you're just really smart. And they may think that you assume that they're lying, even if they're not lying, even though you may not be doing that at all um in the slightest but they see you as somebody that kind of sees through things they may view you as somebody with very piercing eyes or piercing gaze um the almost soul seeing gaze to you like you know something that they don't and they get that vibe from you or they see you as a little quiet like you're not revealing all of your thoughts and they may so there's some people that may get worried about that if they're more on the outspoken side because they're not used to doing that so they assume like you're withholding something and they may jump to conclusions that is something bad <laughs> or they may see you as somebody that they can't lie to they may see you as somebody that they can't get away with certain things with and there's there's certain people that like like that about you that they think it's funny like to play with you in this way because of that and like have a back and forth conversation with you like teasing you going back and forth like that's the kind of energy I think that people perceive of you um they see you as somebody who who is a little bit guarded upon first meeting who doesn't let people very close to them easily like it takes time to open you up they may see you as a little bit shy at first 
they but they also you see with somebody very warm and dependable that you're just not the kind of person to allow anybody into your friend group you're not just anybody to let somebody in to, to your personal life and know all of your secrets like you don't expose all of that and you're very choosy about who gets to know that and who gets close to you and they may see you as a little bit guarded and protective over yourself in that way but yet at the same time very warm just more at a distance like you keep a level of distance until you really get to know somebody better so that's what i'm saying with your shows Let's get into your card and then we'll shuffle some on camera. So this is telling me that people see you as somebody who like once they are, they do make their way into your life. You're like a friend for life. You're somebody very dependable, somebody very compassionate, who's a good shoulder to cry on. They see you as somebody who has a really, really good heart. They see you as somebody who... Some people feel like, wow, this person has the potential to be a really good partner or a really good friend or somebody I can really confide in, somebody that can hold all my deepest secrets. You might be the kind of person where upon meeting, even though you may feel a bit distant because you don't really know people and you may not expose a whole lot about yourself right away, um, I feel like other people may have the tendency to do that to you, like tell you their biggest secrets and it's a stranger, like tell you about the bad day they've had or expose some big secrets <laughs> or vent about their childhood or whatever is going on in their life when you don't really know this person. I think that happens to you a lot because people feel like you have this very inviting energy, like you have the kind of energy where you can carry a secret to the death and people feel like they can easily open up and trust you, but you don't easily open up and trust them. Um, they see you as a very good listener, um, somebody who has a lot more going on in their mind than what they express. So that being said, let's shuffle some cards for you and get some more messages. They may see you as somebody that doesn't like to necessarily get loose all the time, let loose all the time. Um, they see you as more like the dependable, um, somebody that they could hang out with at home or one-on-one. -on -one. They may see you as more introverted or more one-on-one, -on -one, like you'd rather be at home. And maybe you are, I don't know. Um, Three of Pentacles, Eight of Swords. They see you as somebody who may be more absorbed into your own stuff. Like, that may be a reason why you're not talking. Or you just have better things to focus on. Like, you may be the kind of person that's sitting there. Like, if you had an, um, a desk job, like, a, at a front desk or something, you may be doodling in the meantime. Or um, focusing on what you need to focus on. Or your own imagination. And um, people feel like you're somebody that gets lost in your thoughts very easily. They also think that you're very thoughtful. I channel messages intuitively, by the way, from Tarot. They don't always line up with book meetings. Sometimes they do, but my main thing is the intuition behind it. So we have the High Priestess. So yeah, somebody that is more secretive or somebody that's good at holding secrets or like you know something that they don't. They may see you as somebody very intuitive. Like you you have soul seeing eyes. They feel like you have soul seeing eyes. Some of you may actually be intuitives um, and very creative, very imaginative. Uh, like you see some sort of truth that they do not. Like you have all the answers. Um, you may be very empathic, like taking all the emotions and feelings of other people, understanding things from a different perspective. Um, and I feel like, yeah, they think that you're a really good problem solver. They think that you're somebody that's really good at giving advice. You may be very family oriented in their eyes or very dependable and like a good friend or like not the, the person that... It's um, not that you can't make more friends. It's just that you prefer quality over quantity. And people desperately want to be within that quality that you have in there. And that you may um, burn out because you are introverted if you have too much social interaction or too many people around you. And you may very well, well be that way. And people pick up on that. And I feel like you are very good at giving advice. Like the people that you are close to um you it's almost like you change people's lives in this way like you're a lifesaver you're really good at seeing the big picture helping people through difficult situations um problem solver they see you as somebody that is a good problem solver solver especially in interpersonal situations like you're good at giving advice um they may see you as somebody very helpful and compassionate like you have your priorities straight 
transformation, metamorphosis, synchronicity, the unexpected. They may see you as that high priestess vibe there too. Like they may pick up that you are very intuitive. You may do psychic work for a living. Um, and people notice like your empathetic nature. They feel like you can take on their emotions. You see their problems for what they are. And they can get a little bit carried away I'm getting at times with this. Which can be overwhelming for you. You have this natural magnetism to you to where people just want to expose all their deepest, darkest secrets. And you may not be wanting that. <laughs> but it's like they just can't help but, help but do that. I just want one more card, Spirit, please. Somebody who has been through a lot and that's why you keep your bubble very close to you. Uh, you don't go outside of your bubble as much. Or you're just very protective over your bubble. Um, yeah, because you have been through a lot. And it's also a reason why you've built up so much compassion. This is how people view you. They view you as somebody who gives really good advice for that reason as well. Or like you just have the energy. Like people just know it about you or know that they can trust you. Sanctuary, healing and comfort, faith and restoration. Yeah, you give people comfort, um, peace. A lot of people crave your energy, but it's just that you don't want to just give that to everybody because that gets exhausting. Everybody wants a shoulder to cry on. Everybody wants your energy, your ear to listen to them or help solve their problems or their intuition or your healing presence. And at times that gets very exhausting and burns you out. And people might, you may attract in more selfish people for this reason. Um, and it's like they don't understand, like, why can't you take the time out of your day to do this for this person, this person, this person, that person, and them. <laughs> and you're kind of like, I've had enough of this. <laughs> I'm good. I'm closing my bubble. I'm being quiet today. Um, they may see you as somebody who is trying to take more time for themselves and they wish that you would open up more to their energy. Like, that's just some people. This isn't every single person you meet. This is just some of the people. Or maybe it's a specific person. I don't know. But I feel like they see you as somebody who is a powerful healer. I think a lot of people tend to take advantage of that to a degree. Um, they see, like, okay, so for example, I'll use myself an example here. As an example, as a YouTube tarot reader. <laughs> there's people where they come across you and they assume that because you are doing this on a platform free for everybody like it doesn't actually take out time or energy from your day you're doing it freely for everybody on a platform doing these readings so that must mean that you're offering personal readings and that they can get away and weasel their, their way into that when that's not the case and you have to put up those strong boundaries and people might try to make you feel selfish for those boundaries or they keep trying to push to see what they can get away with because you have such a good gift, um, good discernment, good uh, listening ear, good intuition. And I think that's kind of the boat that this group is in to a degree. Even if you're not an intuitive reader, like they see you giving out that energy so they feel kind of entitled to it or see what they can get away with or push boundaries. And I feel like you do push back when needed. Like maybe at times you have given end to this, but you also, I feel like they're in for a rude awakening coming up. Um, you've had to learn how to manage your time, energy, and boundaries, energetic boundaries. And people see you as valuable. They see your insight is very valuable, valuable and your advice is very valuable. And it is. Um, so... My heart goes out to you. I'm sorry that you were dealing with some people that are like that. Group number three, um, you have beautiful energy. You have a brilliant mind. And I hope that you're doing well and staying happy and healthy. Thank you so much for watching. And if this reading resonated with you, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. I really do value and appreciate reading your feedback. Um, and if you are new to the channel and have not already joined the family, please consider subscribing so that you may see future content. And if you're interested in booking a private reading, my service information is listed in the video description below. I am currently offering services through my Etsy shop. So those links are in the video description. And if you are feeling called to donate to the channel, my PayPal link is also in the video description down below. So you may donate to that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I hope to talk to you all in the next reading. Bye.
Hello, my beautiful group number four is our final pile for today. Let's find out what people really think about you, what they're not saying when they first meet you, uh, what they may not necessarily be saying when they first meet you. So we're going to start with Contromancy first. We're going to read the seashells and then we are going to dive in and see what this card is and draw some on camera for you. So remember, this is a general reading. Please only take what resonates with you. Leave the rest behind. I may get specific messages for different people. So keep that in mind. Just because one thing does not resonate with you doesn't mean the whole message will not. Only take what resonates with you and leave the rest behind. Let's get right in. What do people think of when they first meet? What are they say? What are they not saying about what they really think about this group? So we got like a partial shell going on here, and a big one. Okay, interesting. Okay, got double of these. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm not going to take those because that was almost three that fell out. I only want one more. Another one. Okay. Interesting. And I actually do feel to do one more, so oh well. <laughs> okay. So I'm feeling like people see you... When I first meet you, their impression of you is somebody that is very creative. Um, they may view you as somebody that, um, yeah, you're very creative. It shows up in your personal style. Um, you may have certain small features about you, like whether you have small hands or like a small nose or like um, a charming smile. Like there's something that, or a petite frame or something like that. I feel like people notice like certain delicate features about you. Um, they see you as somebody that is very creative, very friendly. I feel like that you don't necessarily just open up to anybody as well, but they see you as somebody with a lot of creativity. They see you as somebody that is likely very artistic. They see you as somebody that, um, takes a little while to warm up to other people, but you have a really vibrant and warm personality or a very electric personality about you. Like you're very exciting. You're very excitable. You're very bubbly. It's just maybe... It's like you're bubbly, but they also know that you are a bit reserved when you don't really know people that well. Like, you're not just going to go expend your energy to, to everybody, or it just takes you a little time to get comfortable. Um, but people feel you are, like, a really rare sighting as well. Like, they love your presence. They love your energy. They love your personality. Um, they get along with you. They feel you as somebody that can get along with pretty much anybody, even if you don't want to get along with pretty much anybody. Uh, I feel like they see you as somebody who has a good fashion sense. Um, they see you as somebody who is good at making friends, that's good at understanding different perspectives, that is good at being more of a peacemaker in a high stress situation. Like they see you as somebody that, um, does not like conflict. They see you as somebody that would rather just get along with everybody that likes to shift and fine tune the mood of the room and make it more pleasant, make it more warm, make it more happy. Um, I feel like they think you're very vibrant. I just got something about music. So maybe some of you are really good singers. Um, people may pick up on this about you. Uh, they may see you as somebody with a really good sense of humor, a really good eye for design or fashion. They may see you as somebody who is just really, you're good at getting along with people. Even if you feel more reserved, like it takes you a bit to get to know people. They can feel from your energy and your presence and your smile and the way you present yourself that you have a really good caring personality, a very vibrant personality, even when you may be being holding off a bit at first. Um, people can just tell and they may think that you are very colorful. Um, maybe you dress very colorful or like there's something very colorful about your style or the way you present yourself um, and your aesthetic. Or people just see you as really well-groomed, as somebody that probably makes really good choices in life. Um, I feel like you probably have one to three best friends, and I feel like people notice this. They love the friendship. They admire the friendship that you build. Like, they admire the connections that you build with other people. Like, if they see that in front of them, they're like, wow, this is really, like, this person's really cool. I wish that I was part of their life. Like, I want to be part of the fun. Like, that kind of energy. 
I see with somebody very bubbling, fizzing up to the surface, warm and inviting and sparky, <laughs> spark, sparky, um, like sparkling in this way, like sparkling up to the surface, like, um, how do I describe this energy? <sighs> Bubbly. <laughs> uh, they see you as somebody, even if you're more you to reserve that energy for certain people, or you're just choosy about who you expend that on. A lot of people just love the vibrance that you put out naturally and it shows up in your facial expressions. They may see you as somebody that is very expressive, that is very like energetic once you get to know people, but you do know how to take time for yourself when needed as well. So that is what I'm seeing with your seashells so far. Let's get into your card and draw some more on camera for you. very creative energy so lion so this is making me think that people see you as very observant like you have you can have like a quiet confidence to you to where you're not being loud and upfront but they can sense the reality to you they can sense the real the regal energy from you the vibrance the um they feel like you have a very very vibrant mind a very bright mind i think either you come off as somebody that is very brilliant that comes up with really good ideas, really electric ideas, Spirit just said. So whatever that means. Um, they're seeing, they say that you're also very protective and caring towards the people that matter the most. They see you as somebody very compassionate, but does not spend your time on things that aren't worth it to you. So you're very choosy, you're very discerning about who gets your energy. You'll still be friendly to people, but you're choosy about that. Uh, they see you as somebody as confident in your style and your looks as well because of however you dress. They may assume that you're a very confident person um, or more outgoing than you may present yourself to be. Um, yeah, people may really admire your style, your aesthetic, and your mind, your vibrance, your creativity. This you as somebody very is very observant. Um, it may take a little while to get to know you, like I said. But it's because you're choosy with your energy. So we have here the Queen of Pentacles. Somebody who's very abundant. Wow, yeah, confidence, confidence out the ass. <laughs> Queen of Pentacles and Queen of Wands. They may see you as somebody very feminine, but very confident. Like you're assertive in your femininity. You're very creative, you're very talented, you're very passionate, and you're also very balanced with that Justice card um, in Ace of Pentacles. You're very creative. You are maybe viewed as more of an opportunist, and you know how to back away from something that isn't good for you. Um, I feel like you have a really good discernment. People know that you have really gifted observation. Sorry, my cards are falling out of my hands. Let me fix this up real quick, too. Okay, sorry for that. Let's get one more of these and then we'll move on to your oracle cards before we close out. They see you as somebody that is very goal oriented and hardworking. Maybe you put a lot of time, energy, and effort into something. Uh, maybe going to school or like some sort of goal or even if you're self-employed like that could be a thing too like they may see you as somebody who's very observant they may see you as an entrepreneur as well somebody that's good at taking the reins of their own decisions making creative risks um taking creative risks i should say and also knowing how to be assertive in yourself when the time comes like you have like a quiet confidence about you but people know like just because you're quiet up on first meeting, like they can sense the confidence radiating, radiating from you, that Queen of Wands energy, that self-sufficiency, the emergence. They see you as somebody who's a go-getter, who's a powerful manifester. They see you as somebody very creative, once again. There's somebody very brilliant, mentally brilliant, creatively, creatively brilliant, even emotionally brilliant. Like they see you as a colorful mind. And emotional freedom, vulnerability, flowing, and rebalancing. Interesting because we had that justice card there, which we have the scales, and then we have that rebalancing within the emotional freedom. So they see you as somebody who, 
chooses to look more at the light side of life like your priorities are your own goals your own ambitions like you know what's important you know you prioritize your own happiness and your own goals over the bs of other people um and i think people are inspired by you i think you inspire a lot of people you have that air of inspiration about you it makes people other people it's contagious to other people it makes them want to be more creative more flowy more um finding out what their goals are you may notice though with this energy people may tend to copy what you're doing because they're trying to find their own individuality so in the process sometimes that can happen where people start to mimic and want to be like you and that can get a bit annoying at times but i'm sensing like you're more of this leader even you're the independent leader without even trying to be well, trying to be people just want to follow your lead because you're an innovator you're very creatively gifted people are like wow this person knows where they're going so i want to be just like them i want to like duplicate their energy even though they have their own energy of course um i feel like you're just this trailblazing spirits especially creatively my god <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed your reading group number four. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Comment down below if you enjoyed your reading and it resonated with you. I really do value and appreciate reading your feedback. And if you are new to the channel and would like to join the family, please hit that subscribe button if you have not already done so. So you may stay up to date with future content when it gets released. Um... If you are interested in booking a private reading with me, my service information is listed in the video description down below. I am currently offering services through my Etsy shop, which those links are once again in the video description down below. And if you feel impelled to donate to my channel, my PayPal link is also in the video description. You can donate through my PayPal link. Thank you so, so very much for being here. It was an honor to do this reading for you. I really enjoyed this pile and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you all again later. Bye!